So like we want to do in all of our medicines, whether it's Chinese medicine or homeopathy, is we want to get to the foundational issue and we want to balance the body. And if there are genetic mutations, this is a little bit more difficult um, to do. I think homeopathy may address this a little bit more than Chinese medicine, um, but that's a very small portion of our bladder stone patients. Our bladder stone patients are typically um, obese patients being fed an inappropriate diet. Um, and so we can make lifestyle changes, food changes, bring the body back into balance. And yes, it will treat the bladder stone, but it will also help them live a healthier, longer life. In traditional Chinese veterinary medicine, bladder stones are a stasis pattern. Um, and that's when the chi has just basically come to a complete standstill and stop. And so those herbals are designed to move the stasis, drain the damp, and also clear the heat. And heat is usually in a urinary tract infection. So we most definitely want to culture our urine and clear the infections where appropriate. So it's not just okay to do a urinalysis and look for bacteria. It is entirely necessary to culture the urine. What kind of bacteria are there? What antibiotic is appropriate to use um, in this circumstance? We also want to check, particularly in our females um, and males too, is what does it look like around the urethra? Um, is it a fat cat that has skin folded over on the vulva that's collecting urine and bacteria? Is it a dog with a prepuce that has nasty infection up inside of it? We want to eliminate the chance for bacteria to grow, procreate around the urethral opening. And we want to correct obesity. And so this goes back to my favorite topic, diet. Um, and correcting the diet, modifying the diet is so very critical to our cat and dog patients. So I don't use any um, formulated foods. And so it's been a long time since I went back to read the ingredient list and got quite the chuckle when our friendly science diet and royal canaan foods ingredient list um i just literally could not believe my eyes um and so for those of you who don't think um or i guess obsess about food as much as i do um you should become avid uh ingredient list readers and you can um, just read the first four ingredients. That's the majority of what's in these foods. And so when I'm reading the urinary care CD, um, diet, and they've made it very easy for veterinarians to use because CD, I think means crystal diet or, or something like that. So you don't even have to know anything about food. You can just grab a can that says the appropriate uh, letter for what you need. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, so the ingredients in our urinary care CD is whole grain corn, chicken meal, so we don't even have a real protein source, pork fat and corn gluten meal. So those are the first four ingredients in client's diet and royal canin is a chicken byproduct meal. If anybody knows well, you probably all do byproducts or everything on the floor after they've used the chicken. Um, so we've got beaks and feathers and that constitutes meal according to AFCO. Brewer's rice, corn and corn gluten meal. So I don't know about you, but none of our cats and our dogs are gonna be walking down the street wanting to eat any of this garbage food. But to the one, I guess, positive thing I can say about the formulations of the garbage food 
is that they have created something that goes into the body and creates the urine pH that's desired. So it can be very, um, e it's easier for veterinarians, particularly new veterinarians, to just grab this food because they're going to get the urine pH into the right um into the right range and you know when we do it our way um it can be a little bit trickier um to do that and it takes a little bit more monitoring and a little bit more grit from the owners but in the end it's it's so much more rewarding so we're going to talk to the owners about feeding a whole food diet again i spend the majority of my time at florida wild talking about whole food diets um, we want to increase the water content in the food. And even if you have a dog or a cat that the owner says drinks tons of water, actually let's make sure that their intake of water is great by measuring the specific gravity. So we want to see it pretty low. Less than 1020 for a cat is, is remarkable. Um, for kitty cats, our urine specific gravity is typically about 1050, and even that is too high. It's causing the kidneys to work too hard, and so they're not getting enough water. Even if they drink water out of a water fountain, the problem is the food does not have enough water content. And so we need to make sure that our cats are getting plenty of water in their food. And so if you're making a whole food diet, or you're feeding a raw diet out, even my, my cats all get soup. So they basically from kittens have learned to eat um, a whole food soup diet. And that, that tends to be um, the best thing for them to get their urine specific gravity lower. So again, we're going to feed whole food whenever is possible. And there are definitely owners who can't do that. And so even you know those owners, I still want them to do some whole food, give these pets something whole that hasn't been processed. And when you feed whole food, you have miraculously decreased the caloric intake. Um, and so you're almost always, not always, but most always gonna see weight loss when you transition them from a high carb, calorie dense dry food to a whole food diet. Um, with their calcium oxalate patients, these patients are a little bit trickier because their body is designed to have an increase in calcium. And these guys are very, um, these guys must, must have diet modifications as well, um, but they're just, we're not as um, free in our um, making of the diet. So very strict with lowering the carbs. Um, they need a really high protein diet. So we can utilize our whole foods to bring the urine pH into appropriate range. So we want to shoot for around seven and a half for calcium oxalate and six and a half for struvite. And so protein is going to acidify the urine. So the protein is going to drop the urine pH and then veggies are going to increase the urine pH. And so we can use those um, with trying to maintain our pH for these patients. So here's some other fun things that we, um, I, I definitely want to touch on. Um, and these are things that we are just starting to use in the last three to four years. And so where I'd love to give you much more information, stay tuned because we're still working on them. So our sauna wave therapy, I'm not sure, Dr. Jeff, have you guys had a lecture on sauna wave therapy? Yeah. We, we, We've talked about it. I'm not sure. Um, no, no, we haven't done an exclusive one, but people have talked. We have talked about it. That's one we should definitely do. So Sauna Wave is um, the late, great Dr. Um, Al Nunez mm -hmm. from Integrative Veterinary Hospital in Florida. Um, he and I got together a few years ago. He passed in January of 2020. Um, but a few years before that, he and I got together and he took the sauna wave technology from the human holistic doctors and he and his brother created this amazing machine that delivers radio frequency to, and he, he would always call them songs. Um, so the radio frequency at different frequencies will do different things in the body. 
And so we are just starting to work on using our sauna wave to dissolve and break up stones. We have used it more effectively in, in gallbladder stones. Um, that's where we're using the sauna wave predominantly. And so these radio frequencies travel through the tissue and they will shape and break up and help increase um, the ability for the body to dissolve the stones. So our bladder stones, we have definitely tried um, and we think it's causing, it's helping for sure. And it certainly helps with inflammation, um, but we can't get the bladder stones sometimes dissolve quickly enough. So again, if it's small, um, you know, then that's certainly something. And our kidney stones is another, we don't see kidney stones very often. Um, I've got a few patients battling kidney stones, but this is where the sauna wave is going to, to really help um, our patients because it'll slowly help dissolve. 